Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Switchblade engineers update fan base on development. Congressman keeps spy balloon issue afloat. Avidyne IFD series gets rotor approvals. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Switchblade engineers update fan base on development. The team behind the Switchblade flying car has updated their fan base on the aircraft's current state, describing their recent issues, challenges, and desires for the program. The most recent news pertains primarily to polishing certain aspects of the design, less than a year after they completed a successful test flight. With many of their bases covered, Switchblade staff are looking to decrease production costs through refinement of existing processes and procedures, and snagging whatever performance improvements they can in the process. Noting that all its, quote, aerodynamics, flying quality, slow speed handling, takeoff characteristics, and landing ease were just what we had hoped for, end quote. They know that customers will always demand greater payload, faster speed, and longer range. Thrust and drag improvements to the propulsion system will hopefully provide a little boost to top-end speed and performance, and a larger wing should provide a lower approach speed with increased useful load. The team is mulling over wing refinements that would not only, quote, reduce maintenance and assembly times, but also provide for better performance and lighter weight, end quote. Quote, we are not done by any stretch of the imagination, but we are very well along with the production design, and will be going back to the wind tunnel soon to validate our proposed changes, end quote. And after the break, Genesis Aerosystems to offer autopilot on Enstrom 480Bs. Backcountry flying to us is our playground. For us, it's how we access the things we like to do. It's just our lifestyle. We exclusively use the, the Hartzell Voyager prop, and it's proved to be um, just a great combination for what we do. What it's doing, it's, it's helping us all have better performing airplanes. Man. It feels a lot better clearing trees by 50 feet versus 20 feet. I don't ever see myself not flying. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. A special month is coming to Sun and Fun's 50th fly-in celebration. Multi-platinum singer, Dylan Scott. Out here living, living my best life, yeah. Dylan Scott with special guest, Sarah Evans. Get your tickets now. Be a part of the kickoff celebration for Sun and Fun's 50th flying. Go to flysnf.org. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Genesis Aerosystems to offer autopilot on Enstrom 480Bs. Genesis Aerosystems will begin providing its Genesis helicopter autopilot in the Enstrom 480B this year, following installation and certification. The roadmap for this Genesis 3-axis VFR autopilot believes that certification will be completed soon, with the unit available for factory fit or aftermarket retrofit by the end of 2024. Interested 480B customers can have the autopilot installed by Enstrom itself or by any approved Genesis dealer. The autopilot system is a lightweight and affordable addition to the 480B, offering all the functionality of a standard three-axis system like heading, nav, approach, VSI, indicated speed, and altitude hold. Seaplane drags wingtip near Miami. A seaplane coming in to land near Miami, Florida overturned while decelerating, sending all seven passengers aboard on a stressful, even harrowing dip in the drink that ultimately ended in relative safety. A Cessna 208 on floats was meandering through a channel between Port Miami's cruise ship terminals and a connective causeway on its way back to the Miami seaplane base when it tipped over, dunking one of its wings in the sea. The 1999 caravan had taken off at around 1,300 hours local time on Friday and was coming back in after a successful tour of the local area. 
V-29 Dog has to reschedule Wichita flights. The scheduled ride flights announced in Wichita, Kansas for March 8th and 10th at the B-29 Dock Hangar Education and Visitor Center have been canceled and will be rescheduled at a later date. Josh Wells, B-29 Dock Executive Director, said, quote, During our planned and scheduled annual winter maintenance season, our team has been impacted by unforeseen and unplanned delays that ultimately led to the decision to make a change to our ride flight schedule in Wichita March 8th and 10th, end quote. Mississippi Air National Guard AH-64 crashes, killing two. An AH-64 Apache on a routine training flight crashed near Boonville, Mississippi, according to the National Guard. The incident took place in the afternoon, not quite the inclement dangerous night missions often associated with fatal Apache incidents. The type's mission to hug the ground has always been a factor in crashes since its introduction, but the incident only raises eyebrows in a time when every week brings fresh news of another training crash. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Congressman keeps spy balloon issue afloat. Congressman Darrell Issa of California's 48th District is demanding answers from FBI Director Christopher Wray on the agency's knowledge of and analysis performed on the Chinese spy balloon that traveled more than 4,000 miles across the United States just over a year ago. Issa's letter was sent as a response to the Biden administration's refusal to disclose any findings from the Bureau's examination of the balloon after it was shot down by the Air Force after traveling across most of the continental U.S. An excerpt from the letter reads, quote, Unfortunately, ever since the craft entered U.S. airspace and then was noticed by citizens on the ground, the Biden administration has sought to obscure what it knew about the spy balloon and when, as well as virtually shield the PRC insofar as possible. President Biden assured the country it was not a major breach, while the State Department offered a muted response. This is insufficient to meet our national security interests and the public's right to know. The PRC's infringement of American airspace constitutes a significant violation of American sovereignty and a major intelligence failure. Given the gravity of the incident and the suspect nature of the administration's assertions, Congress must be briefed on the FBI and the interagency's findings without further delay." End quote. After these messages, Avidine IFD series gets rotor approvals. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Avidyne IFD series gets rotor approvals. Avidyne is starting HAI with the news that their partner, UK-based Horizon Design Services, has received CAA approval and FAA validation of an approved model list supplemental type certificate for installation of the Avidyne IFD series FMS GPS NavCom systems as replacements for legacy GNS series navigators in nine different helicopter models. This AML STC provides a streamlined basis for installation of the Avidyne IFDs in a broad range of popular helicopters, eliminating the need for dealers and maintenance repair and overhaul facilities to perform costly field approvals with these avionics upgrades. Avidyne President Dan Schwinn said, quote, 
We've had a lot of success with AML STCs in the fixed wing market, and we are really pleased that Horizon was able to move forward with this helicopter AML." End quote. The Avidyne IFD series are modern slide-in replacements for legacy GNS 430, 530W series navigators and can utilize the existing GNS trays, connectors, and wiring, dramatically reducing installation time and cost. The IFDs are well-suited for helicopter operation, with both knob and button and touchscreen controls, 3D synthetic vision, HTAS, RS-170 video support, heliport databases, and displays of nearby traffic and weather. The AML STC package for helicopters can be purchased by authorized dealers and MROs directly from Horizon Design Services for $2,500. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.